Unbelievably, my fellow Torontonian Dwight Powell is on pace to set the NBA record for the highest offensive rating in NBA history. In another playmaking clinic on the road, in a heated battle between Giannis and the reigning champs, Luka Doncic made it so that he has as many 30-point, 15-assist games this season as the rest of the NBA combined. Similarly to the team we broke down yesterday in the Boston Celtics, Dallas has morphed into contenders after a slow start. The best team in the state of Texas has an NBA third best record of 34 and 14 since Christmas Day, back when their record was 15 and 17. Ever since December 25th, Jason Kidd's found an extremely solid rotation, while the front office has done an ideal job surrounding their franchise player Luka Doncic with the right complement of lengthy, laterally mobile, and capable shooting talents. Based off all that, it's necessary that in today's video, we delve into why the Dallas Mavericks 2022 playoff core looks terrifying. Right before that, 89.8% .8 of you watching right now aren't subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also leave a thumbs up. It takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. Considering against the 12 teams in both conferences with a guaranteed position in the playoffs, Dallas has a record of 14-4 and four in such games. The 2022 Mavericks are built to last deep into the spring. Since the bubble, fans in the Big D have suffered through their team losing in six, and then the next year in seven games during the opening round, both times at the hands of Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. Luka has to shoot better than 66% from the charity stripe like he did at Disneyland, and his 53% free throw line efficiency from 2021's playoffs obviously has to be much better as well. This time, with the ramped up pressure and ridiculously intense environment that comes with the NBA playoffs, Doncic has to embrace the mental fortitude that it takes to slow yourself down and hit freebies at a time when every point feels like life or death. Having said that, aside from the points left at the charity stripe, while this may sound extreme, Luka's first two postseason appearances saw him prove to the world that he's got the talent to one day become firmly known as the greatest player of all time. I'm sure MJ won't be hugging Luka if he achieves that. Oh, pause. In Doncic's first 13 career postseason games, the face of the Mavericks franchise has averaged an unheard of 33.5 points, 9.5 assists, and 8.8 .8 rebounds per game, making an elite 50% of his shots from the field and 40% of his deep range bombs. Doncic broke a 71-year NBA record for the most points in a player's postseason debut, from there, whether it was his 2020 or 2021 series against the LA Clippers, Luka made getting buckets for himself and his teammates in the postseason look shockingly easy, maybe easier than I've ever seen. Skipping ahead to the present day, and having just turned 23 years of age, Doncic is about to finish his third NBA season already of posting 28.9 assists and 9 rebound averages. Point being is that, if you have the Slovenian sensation on your team, that alone gives you a chance to win a championship, albeit if he's surrounded by the properly suited weapons. Winning in the modern NBA is predicated by a team's mix of athleticism, lateral mobility, size plus shooting, and Dallas's current roster perfectly fits that mold. Not only is their superstar the second best defender at his position only behind Chris Paul while being 6 foot 8, 240 pounds, but aside from the team's third scorer in Jalen Brunson, every player in the Mavs rotation is at the very least 6 foot 6 inches tall. At that size, with a sharp shooting lockdown 3 and D player and the Mavericks season leader in plus minus Reggie Bullock, the NBA's seventh most efficient 3 point shooting power forward in Dorian Finney-Smith, along with the mobile 6'10 player we're going to break down next in Dwight Powell, are the main reasons for why Dallas can switch everything defensively. Since the 25th of December, the Mavs defense ranks top 5 among all 30 squads, only behind the Celtics, Grizzlies, Heat, and Suns, as since starting two games under 500 nearly midway through the season, Dallas has flipped the switch, as this Mavs team has suddenly bought into Jason Kidd's system. For the amount of mobile big bodies surrounding Luka, you can give a ton of credit to owner Mark Cuban, the previous general manager Don Nelson who was in charge from 2006 up until 2021, and of course the new GM Nico Harrison. We'll get to Nico's brilliant acquisition of Dinwiddie, but defining the word underrated when Mavs center Dwight Powell isn't eating an inappropriate amount of food, 
Hey, this is Dwight Powell. Um, one of my favorite traditions that me and my friends do when I get back home to Toronto <laughs> is we order an inappropriate amount of food. He's had the most historically efficient offensive season of all time in 2021-22. After posting the fourth highest offensive rating mark of all time back in 2018-19, the Canadians on pace to snap the NBA record for the highest offensive rating this season. Coincidentally, Rudy Gobert is directly behind Powell in O rating this year, as the Frenchman's having the second most efficient offensive campaign of all time. But whether it's Dwight Powell's timely handoffs and slips to the basket, his big body screen setting, his finishing around the basket, or general mobility, his on-court impact is more than evident, it's game-changing. After being drafted 45th overall and spending a few months in Beantown, on December 18th of 2014, Boston shipped Dwight Powell along with Rajon Rondo over to Dallas in exchange for Jay Crowder, Jameer Nelson, Brandon Wright, and two picks. While Rajon Rondo's Mavs tenure turned out to be a nightmare, picking up a five-man in that deal who's gone on to prove himself as the NBA's most overlooked center in Dwight Powell, in hindsight, makes that transaction from seven-plus years ago seem well worth it. Speaking of transactions, the most recent one for the Mavs was trading for a former 20-point-per-game 6'6 shot-creating floor general in Spencer Dinwiddie. An elite sixth man, already having drained back-to-back -back game winners like he's DeRozan, the Mavs' winning percentage with and without Dinwiddie proves his transcendent value to this roster. Prior to Spencer's arrival, this was a stagnant system that gave 15 shots, including a hefty five threes per game to Chris Stapp's Porzingis, and the Unicorn made under 30% of his shots from three-point range. Porzingis had his moments of resembling an elite stretch big, like he did against the Mavericks a few days ago. However, Dallas was severely lacking another talent who could create for themselves off the dribble outside of Luka. That's why the addition of Spencer's five assists and 15 to 20 points on any given night have boosted Dallas's win percentage from 57.6% without him to a blistering 75% with him. Dinwiddie's ability to change pace off the dribble, step back for jumpers, and facilitate somewhat resembles Luka, and that's crucial for the Mavericks' playoff chances. They need another guy to take the pressure off him. What makes the Mavericks most dominant this year? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out. Top 5 commenters by June 21st receive free NBA merchandise this summer, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Jake Ryan, who says, as a Celtics fan, I am cautiously optimistic going into the postseason, although Tatum has vastly improved his decision-making in the second half of the season. In the Miami game, he didn't seem to have an answer for when he got blitzed. I thought he worked through those problems, but against a good team like Miami, he seemed to revert back to his old self, which I'm worried will happen in the playoffs with a heightened intensity. Appreciate every answer. I hope you have a great one. DFlow signing off.